Okay, can can everyone see my screen okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, what is live streaming and multi-camera live streaming? So live streaming is basically filming on your mobile phone, on your smartphone, and um, you're filming directly to a platform such as Facebook or Twitter. Um, and when, we talk, when I'm talking about vMix, um, this is just a piece of software. And um, for us filming, it's much easier on vMix, um, but we have somebody who takes lots of different people filming at the same time and does an edit of them. So we can have up to eight people filming anywhere in the world. And for us, it's much easier. We still just film on our smartphones, but they choose between which, which cameras they're going to. And then they put it out to, with that software, they can go out to lots of different platforms. Um, so all you need to be able to actually live stream um, or to do the vMix is basically you need your smartphone. I've just been bought a cup of tea. Thank you very much. Um, is your smartphone, um, some data, and also um, the headphones that come with your phone. So just the little ones that stick in your ears and go straight into your phone. And that just means that you can hear, if you're doing the ones where it's multi-camera, the person will say, I'm gonna to come to you next um, in your country. Um, and then they'll say, okay, we're now cutting to another place so that you know when your, your camera is going straight to Facebook um, and data. Um, so that, that's the things that you need. And I think basically um, it uses about a gigabyte of data per hour for either live streaming or vmixing. Um, so potentially when you want to live stream, you just, you're just going onto it at the time that you want to be going live to that Facebook or to that different channel. It should be in play mode. There we go. So preparation for a live stream. Um, when, you're, when you're filming a live stream, it uses up a lot of the battery power. So make sure that your phone is fully charged. And if you have a battery pack, it's worth having it with you. I make sure that my phone is charging all the way till I get to an action or an event so that it's fully charged when I start. Um, make sure you've got enough data left to do, to do your live stream. Um, make sure that you have access to the Facebook site that you want to live stream to. So if you're going to your group's Facebook page, make sure that you're signed in and when you go to those, if you were going to do a post, what you should see is there's options to like um, upload a photo. And one of the options is to live stream. So you'll know if you're signed in to do that. Um, and then just generally, like I make sure I've got a contact for the person who's organizing the event. Um, and so I know where to get to. And also just practice live streaming before. You don't want to be suddenly going live and realizing that um, you haven't done it before. So do a bit of practice beforehand. And then also before you start streaming, like this is just immediately before you start um, live streaming, um, I write the notes about the action into my um, notes on my phone. So I, I'll probably take some of those words from maybe the press release or something that people have been writing when they've been planning their action. So it'll have a title, a description of the action, and then think of um, people and, play and, um, and groups to tag in there. So you do the at symbol, and then the names of the other groups. So that might be other um, XR groups in your country, or it might be the global XR group. And then those groups will get to see that those things, you know, that your events are there. Also check if you have 4G. And if you do, turn the Wi-Fi off. It then is a it's a stronger signal if you can just do it straight through 4G. And then the very last thing I do is I switch do not disturb on my phone. Um, on so that um, people can't phone me during a live stream. Otherwise that can actually cut the stream. Um, I think I probably need to do a bit more of a description about the tags and hashtags. So tags is the at signs for different groups um, and, um, and the hashtags is if there's like a theme. So it might be a hashtag COP26, for example, to put, put those in in your description. Okay, and how to live stream. So I'm um, just going to play this very short video. Um, and so this is me putting my phone on. Oh, sorry. And so basically, I open up my phone and I go and find Facebook, for example. And then I search for the group I'm going to stream to. So this is Rebellion, um, Extinction Rebellion Oxford. And then there I can see I've got the live sign. So I click on that. And then I go to my notes where I wrote earlier all about this um, live stream workshop and I copy those notes. And then I go back to Facebook and I paste them into the description. 
So press there and paste. Okay, really, really importantly, the next thing to do is to turn your phone to landscape so that the long length is along the top. Um, and that means that it's the same shape as your computer and we can use this video footage to then go into other live streams. I'm just gonna pause briefly there. When you, when you press go live, when you, um, you then see the live sign in the top corner. And if I had any people watching that in those few seconds, the numbers would come up there. So you might see that there are 57 people watching there. Um, and it also comes up with the time that you've been streaming. And then when you finish, when, you're, when, you've, oh, when you've decided to finish your stream, oh, it's gone back to the beginning. I think I can go to here. Mm -hmm. You press finish and then it saves it. Okay. And now I want to save it to my phone if you've got space. And then I want to share it. And that sharing means that it's um, going permanently up onto that Facebook site. And then this was only a few seconds long. If it's been like 15 minutes or 30 minutes, it's going to take a bit longer to save. And then I go back and find it there just to make sure it's all gone live. At the bottom there, if I just pause again, um, you can just see a share button here. If you click there and then do copy link, you can then share that to all the people you know. And then the different, um, like we'll have a COP26 content list we'll set up. And you paste that link into there so that we know you've been live there and can go and see that. And then the different people in that group can also share that content out as widely as possible as well. Um, during my um, live streams, I um, interview people to find out what's going on there. Um, I often try and ask people beforehand um, if they're up for being interviewed. Um, and when I'm asking people during a live stream, I don't point the camera at them. I point it maybe at a placard or a banner that's there and, and then I'll turn around and say, oh, you know, are you OK to be interviewed so that you're not pointing it at somebody who then might say no. That's just a sort of um, just being respectful. And then things you could ask them is like ask them why they've got involved, describe what's going on today. What do they hope to achieve with the action? And I usually end my interviews by saying, is there anything else that you'd like to say? And I get my best answers with that last question. People suddenly tell me all about the experience and, and their sort of like expertise, which is usually, usually the most interesting bit of, of my interviews. And, and just get a bit of a balance between um, like how much they're talking and not letting them talk too long. So think about how long you want that interview to be. And then thinking about the footage that you want to capture during a live stream, um, I would say the banners, like try and show the number of people that are there and then interviews, which explain why they're there and who they are. Um, I, don't like, I don't start the live stream ahead of the action because this could mean it gets stopped. Remember, if your live stream is going out into a public space, then you could have like um, police or other people looking at that stream at the same time. So just be conscious of that. Um, and then I also narrate, um, I do it from behind the camera because I'm shy usually when I'm live streaming, <laughs> but you can also do it in front of the camera saying why you're there and what the action's all about. So you can be a narrator just saying what's going on or you can also present it by being in front of the camera as well and then find your interviewees to add to that. And then other notes were just to hold the phone as steady as you can. Really, really important to keep it landscape. Um, and if, if people are doing speeches, make sure that you get right to the front so you've got good audio and a good image of them. And then don't forget to share that link to your live stream um, as soon as you can. So um, that it could even be, um, if other people are with you, they could see the live stream on their Facebook, on their page, and then share that straight away. So we could even be sharing it while it was live. Um, but you can't do it while you're actually live streaming on that phone. You'd need somebody on another phone to do that. But share that link to your live stream so that we can all amplify each other's actions. Okay, I'm gonna stop the share there.